excuse me, I guess I haven't talked enough this morning yet. Let me have a sip of coffee. Um, <clears throat> thanks for joining me on So What this morning. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. And uh, let me know where you're joining from in the comments. Um, hold on just one moment. <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening to my voice. Hopefully it will come back. Um, you know, those mornings where you just get busy. Um, I work from home, so I seriously have not spoken out loud. I think since I started working this morning, so I had no idea that was going to happen. I apologize. Anyway, thank you so much for joining. Let's kind of start again. <laughs> This is So What with Sulky, where we come together, talk about all things sewing. If you have any questions about Sulky products or projects or things that you're working on, be sure to put them in the comments and in the live chat so we can address them throughout the show today. Um, again, I hope you had a great holiday if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah. Um, and if you're just celebrating the holiday season, I hope that you had a fantastic week. Um, it has been bitter, bitter cold in lots of the country, so I hope everyone is staying warm and safe and together with family and friends. Um, how long do you all keep up your holiday decorations? I'm curious to know because, um, you know, there's lots of schools of thought about this. Um, I kind of start taking things down a little at a time. So, for example, on Christmas morning, when the stockings are full and they come down, um, I just never put them back up. So those get put away. And then I just kind of do things here and there. <clears throat> Excuse me again. <clears throat> for example, if I'm in a room and I notice like, oh, I changed out that picture um, I know I'm never going to remember to put that away. I'll grab it and start putting things away. So I really don't do a big chunk of, you know, decoration removal day, but I'm just curious how long you all keep up your tree. Um, if you have a Christmas tree, that is how long, you know, you keep your lights out, all of those things. Um, I like to have mine done before New Year's Eve because, <clears throat> I like to decorate a little bit for New Year's Eve. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to pause so you don't have to listen to this crazy voice that's happening to me. I have so many different beverages that I gather for so what? And I don't know if I need cold water or hot coffee, so I'm just going to try both. <laughs> Some of you are in saying you take things down on New Year's Eve. Um, take things down before New Year's, but you're entertaining, so you'll leave it all up. You know, it's so much work to put it up, and, you know, I like to enjoy it as much as possible, but I just feel like, you know, the day after Christmas, um, maybe that's a little bit too soon, but the day after the day after Christmas, which is today, <laughs> that's when I kind of like to take the bulk of things down. If I have a day off, um, pockets of time, that type of thing. But at any rate, I do like to decorate for New Year's Eve, which is what we're going to be talking about today. I don't go all out like I would for Christmas, but I like to have a little bit of glitz and glam here and there, especially if I'm having people over or even just for my kids. We celebrate a New Year's Eve a little bit earlier, um, although the older they're getting, the more they want to stay up until the clock strikes midnight, which is frightening um, <laughs> for me and for their dad. Um, but at any rate, just some little things here and there to add a little bit of sparkle, you know, when you're putting your New Year's Eve hat on or your little, um, you know, New Year's Eve headband or however you choose to celebrate New Year's Eve. So that's what we're going to talk about today are just some quick and easy uh, New Year's Eve decorations that you can stitch out using your embroidery machine, um, grabbing some blanks, making things super easy and simple so that we're not overwhelmed by making a whole big project for New Year's Eve, but we're still 
putting our homemade stamp on something and having a little, you know, metallic thread, shiny, glitzy, shimmery, something or other, um, you know, in our kitchen, dining room, uh, living room, wherever we're going to celebrate that evening. So uh, before I get to that, first off, while I'm talking today, I'm going to be mentioning a lot of products that maybe you want to add to your cart and um, over at sulky.com. So I want to make you aware that we have this coupon code that you might want to jot down as well so that you don't forget to use it at checkout. So if you spend $50 or more today at sulky.com, you will get 30% off your purchase. Um, there is a little bit of fine print for some things that are excluded from that. Obviously, our great clearance section and things like that that are already discounted. Um, but use the code AFTER30 to get that 30% off of your purchase. So don't forget that. Jot it down while you're jotting down some other things that you might want to take a look at at sulky.com as we go along today. Let's see. Angela says, I take some down after New Year's, after January 6th for other things. That sounds smart. Um, oh, Leslie says, if you celebrate Epiphany, you leave it up for 12 days after Christmas. Okay. Excellent. Um, Crystal, I feel you here. She says, uh, once when I was young, I took the tree down before the New Year. It set, upset my mother terribly. She liked to ring in the new year with the spirit of Christmas. I feel you. You know, my husband, he likes to keep the decorations up as long as possible. And after a few days, I get itching to put something else up, <laughs> whether it's something for New Year's, something for Valentine's Day. Um, I just like to enjoy it all. So um, sometimes he gets upset with me too, if he notices that something is missing and it's too soon. <laughs> Um, Debbie says, I take the decorations down on New Year's Day. All right. So speaking of New Year's Eve, I know I have been talking about this so, so much, but there are only four days left to sign up for our New Year's Eve so along this year. We will be going live on New Year's Eve. So if you would like a project to do that day, maybe before you take down all of your decorations and all of those good things, you can join us live for this four hour sew along event. If you are already registered, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. If you are not, you can check it out using the link in the description of today's post. If you'll scroll all the way down, it's the last thing mentioned in the description of today's post. And if you're not seeing it, all you have to do is click on that little see more button and the whole description will pop out. You'll see links for everything I'm going to talk about today, including our New Year's Eve decor quick project, as well as the link to register for New Year's Eve. Along with your registration, not only do you get a four hour sew along class with me for the machine embroidery and Jessica Barrera from Sally Tomato for the construction of that Smith bag I was just showing you, but you also get the Smith PDF pattern completely free with your registration fee. You also get a collection of five embroidery designs from Embroidery Library and Urban Threads. And I just want to show you all those because I've gotten a lot of questions via email leading up to the event about the embroidery. Do we do the embroidery first? Should the embroidery already be loaded into the machine? Etc. Etc. So <clears throat> I want to mention that New Year's Eve is on a Saturday this year. So our customer support team at sulky.com will be out of the office. I will be handling questions as they come in during the event. But as you know, as you know, watching So What and being here with me every Tuesday, these questions and comments can go by really, really quickly. And I want to make sure that you're getting your questions answered during the event um, so we are going to have some pockets of time where we're allowing people to catch up before we go on to the next steps of the bag and the embroidery and all that good stuff. Um, but if you have questions leading up to the event, don't save them until the day of because it's going to be little old me handling the sulky questions and then 
a couple of people from Sally Tomato handling the Sally Tomato questions on the day of the event. So if you do have questions leading up to the event, be sure to either put them in the chat right now, send us an email at info at sulky.com or customer care at sulky.com. We want to make sure to get those questions answered before you even come to the event on Saturday. So questions about the designs, questions about the thread, questions about the embroidery, all of that goes to Sulky. Questions about the kit, questions about the Smith pattern, all of that <clears throat> goes to Sally Tomato. And if you want to just send everything to Sulky, we can route it to the right person and get you the answers. <clears throat> I'm so sorry that my voice is leaving me this morning. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention regarding the embroidery designs, <clears throat> we do want you to take a look at the designs that you get once you register. I'm going to go through them right now. Decide on the one that you want to use for your Smith bag for the sew along, okay? You can use all five in more projects, anything you like, bags, totes, jackets, tops all kinds of stuff, but decide on the one you want to use on New Year's Eve, load it into your embroidery machine so it's ready to go. Take a look at the hoop size that you're going to need and have it at the ready. That's really all you need to do to get ready for the machine embroidery. As far as your threads and bobbin thread, when you get your embroidery design files, once you register for the event, you'll see all of your freebies on the event page there. Once you open up your embroidery design file, you will find a text file within all of the embroidery designs all together in a zip file. That text file has your thread sequence chart in it, okay? So you'll want to set aside the threads that you need for your machine embroidery. There are a couple of choices for bobbin threads, okay? You can use sulky 60 weight bobbin thread, <clears throat> excuse me, or you can use sulky 60 weight poly light thread. And that's actually what I'm going to use, but it did not come in the kit. Okay. So a poly light thread is also a 60 weight thread, just like the regular bobbin thread is, but it's polyester and it comes in all the great colors. <clears throat> The same colors of Poly Deco come in Poly Light. So you can match your bobbin thread with your upper thread, um, or you can choose a bobbin thread color that kind of matches with the backing of the faux leather. Now the Sally Tomato faux leather has this really great quality sort of felty feeling backing to it. This is the wrong side of the faux leather. So what I did was I picked a poly light color that matched the wrong side of the faux leather. And that's what I used for the bobbin. But you could also use the 40 weight poly deco in the bobbin that comes with the kit. If you purchased or plan to purchase a Smith kit from sallytomato.com for the event, First off, read the description of the kit on their website because you need to use a coupon code to get it for the really great deal that they're giving people who are registered for the New Year's Eve event. So be sure to read all the fine print, all the description. But at any rate, for example, the blue kit that I'm showing right now with this butterfly, my threads are kind of crazy because I'm getting ready uh, for the sew along, but comes with six spools of poly deco thread for the embroidery and the construction of the Smith organizer. You can also choose one of these colors as your bobbin thread, or you can wind a bobbin for each color you plan to use in the embroidery and swap it out with each thread change. So you have lots of options for what to do in the bobbin. If you want to wind a bobbin with each color, um, let's say this butterfly has 
four color changes. I really can't remember what it is right now, but let's just say for the sake of, you know, conversation that it has four colors. If you want to wind four bobbins to go along with your embroidery so that it's just as pretty from the wrong side as it is from the right side, I want you to be sure to wind those bobbins before we get started because we aren't going to be able to, I, I'm not sure you'll be able to catch up if you have to begin the event with winding bobbins. Um, so also choose the thread color that you want to use to construct your bag. If you're using the blue bag, um, you might want to use the 1046 because it goes with the main color of the bag. So it would blend in quite nicely if you wanted to use that to construct the bag. Or <clears throat> you could go with the 1206 that comes with your kit. This matches the contrast leather. And then for all of your top stitching, you'll have this contrast color on your bag. So choose the thread color you want to use for construction and make sure you have a full bobbin of that ready to go when we <clears throat> get to the construction portion of the bag. Same goes for the brown bag. Um, choose your construction uh, thread color that comes in your kit. You'll get all these great brown colors of thread. Choose the one you want for construction. Wind a bobbin of it. Also, choose what you want to use for your bobbin for the embroidery. Now, if you are making the decorative stitched option rather than the machine embroidery, this is the decorative stitched option that we're going to do. Um, and I have lots of different options for this as well. This is just my example of the non-embroidery version. It still has lots of thread colors um, featured and makes a really cool personalized project. You don't have to put this on the flap. Lots of different things we're going to talk about in four days. Um, but you can use just one color in the bobbin. So you can choose the color you want to use for construction, wind a bobbin, maybe two of that. Use that for all the decorative stitching and all the construction of the bag. Same color of thread in the bobbin. Won't have to swap it out unless your bobbin runs out during the event. And then you'll be ready to go. So I want to make sure that you are all prepared so that we can all keep up and stay together and create our bag from start to finish. Um, we also are expecting that you're going to pre-cut your pattern pieces. I don't expect that you will do the embroidery ahead of time. That's a lot of what I'm going to talk about is teaching perfect placement, giving options for where to place the embroidery, um, also tips for embroidering faux leather um, and tricky fabrics. So we will be doing that all together. There's no need to do your embroidery ahead of time. If you want to add embroidery in multiple places, um, it, de it depends on the designs that you choose, but just be mindful of your time in doing so. So that's why pre-cutting your pieces are going to be very helpful to just allow us to get going and move throughout the event all together. All right, so if there's any other questions about that, if you are joining us New Year's Eve, uh, put your questions in the in the chat below um, or the comments below and I'll address them throughout today's um, event because again, we will not have a whole team of sulky customer support on Saturday, New Year's Eve. So I want to be sure that you're getting the questions answered. Um, yes, a lot of people are saying so many choices. <laughs> Okay, Eva says, will the supplies come by New Year's Eve if not already ordered? So the kits are fulfilled by Sally Tomato. So at sallytomato.com, you will find a link to, or you'll find the product for the New Year's Eve Smith Organizer Kit. You'll need to contact them to see if you can expedite shipping because, again, we're starting on Saturday and I have no idea what's going on with the postal system. 
Um, I don't know if they have an overnight shipping option that you can pay extra for, but here's the thing. If your kit doesn't arrive on time, if you've already ordered it and you're waiting for it, if it got caught up in the crazy deep freeze, like a lot of my packages did, um, and some of them didn't arrive by Christmas. Um, but at any rate, whatever happens, happens. And if that happens to you and your kit does not arrive, you can still join us live on New Year's Eve, watch the whole thing, participate, ask your questions. And then when your kit does arrive, you can go back to the event page and watch the entire event start to finish, or you can fast forward, pause, rewind, rewatch, whatever you need to review when your kit does arrive. So that's the beauty of the Sulky Education Platform is once we go live, the event turns into an on-demand replayable event as soon as that live event ends. So there's a little bit of processing time and then you'll be able to go back to the event page and watch it right there review anything that you need. So be sure to register even if you can't attend live because it's such a great resource to have. Plus you get all those freebies. You'll get the pattern for free. You'll get the five embroidery designs for free that you can use for this and so many other projects. And then you get this class that you can review over and over again whenever you need a refresher on the pattern. All right. Let's make sure that, oh, Janice is going to join for the class. Fantastic. Okay, Grace says, why do we need to match the bobbin? I thought the back of the embroidery would be hidden when I read the instructions. Well, actually, the back of the embroidery is exposed, um, but it's hidden by your zipper pocket but there's no lining on any of the pieces. It's all made out of faux leather. It's all top stitched. So there's no turning anything right side out. Now I am gonna give you some examples of using other materials to conceal the back of your embroidery. So if you want to do that on the day of the event, I will be sharing some of those tips um, and some versions that I did. Um, I'll just give you a sneak peek on this version that has the decorative stitching. You would see everything from the wrong side once you get into the pocket, but it is concealed by this zipper pocket if this is where you choose to put your design. Now, if you choose to put your design, let's say on this back piece so that it's not covered up by your flap, let's say, so let's say you decide to center a design along the back of the um, organizer. It is completely open on the inside. This is the back of the faux leather. So you would want to um, add a piece of, let's say, no fray fabric of some kind and add that to this large organizer piece. So I'm gonna give you some other examples of options you can do. Um, if you want to conceal the back of your embroidery or you can match the back side of your embroidery so it looks just as pretty as the front and when you go to get into your pocket you will see the back of that beautiful embroidery and you'll see a lot of these designs are symmetrical so they look cool from the back side as well and i'm going to show you these designs in just a minute but this one i added a piece of sulky felty to this portion, the flap portion of the bag, and it completely conceals the wrong side of all those decorative threads. And that felty sort of mimics the kind of felt backing that you have on the back of the faux leather. So that's just one addition you can um, choose to add if you want to conceal the back side of your embroidery. But I don't want to give away the entire class here on So What. I want people to register and come and join and learn all of the tips, techniques, and construction um, for all of these little sort of hacks that I put into the pattern. What size needle do you recommend for the construction and embroidery? For this project, I'm gonna use a size 80, 12, 
Microtex needle. And I'm going to use that needle for the embroidery and the construction. It's important to grab a new pack of needles so that you can use a new needle for the embroidery, then swap your needle for the construction. And a new sharp needle when we begin is really paramount because with this top stitch technique of the bag, sometimes we are sewing through, this part has four layers of faux leather. We need a nice, sharp, pointy needle. All right. So that 8012 Microtex is what is recommended. And we will be talking about that and why we're choosing that needle among all others um, during the event as well. Suzanne's planning on joining. Great. And just to remind everyone, we will be starting at 12 noon Eastern time and sewing along for four hours. All right, perfect. So here are the designs. Now, like I said, you'll get five designs that are so generously provided by Urban Threads and Embroidery Library. This is the Vibrant Blue Morpho Etching Butterfly. And I wanna show you my example because this image doesn't really show you um, how beautiful the design is, in my opinion. It looks like there's a lot of black thread in it. Um, I want to mention, too, that this design was specifically digitized for the faux leather fabric. So it's less dense, more airy and open, and here's what it actually looks like once you sew it out on the bag. So it looks really black in that picture, but I wanted to show you just how pretty it is with all those blue colors and the black is really just some outline stitching for the detail of the butterfly. All right. So when you look at it up against there, it's so hard to capture these things. Sometimes you just have to have the perfect lighting um, and it's hard to see on camera sometimes. So I wanted to show you my example of that butterfly because I really, really loved that design when I first saw it. You will also get the family roots tree design. And again, that one's a little bit hard to see as well, but it looks really striking on the finished brown faux leather. This is another butterfly option. Um, this is an Urban Threads design, so just a little bit different style of butterfly. These are all sized perfectly to fit on that flap piece, which is really what I'm going to show off on the day of the event. I'll also show you an embroidery option for the zipper pocket um, if you choose to add your embroidery there. So that is also a great place to put your embroidery design so that the back side of it is concealed within this zipper pocket. All right, also this Global Stamps border design. This design fits perfectly above that strap. So no part of the design is concealed by that strap. It doesn't bother me that these other ones are because I feel like I'm going to use it so many times that it's really only going to be concealed when I'm kind of storing it and going from place to place. So no biggie for me. Um, but this one looks really cool over the top of that strap right there. And it's sized perfectly, again, to fit on that flap. And then enjoy the journey. This is the one I just showed you on that zipper pocket. This comes in two colorways. So if you grabbed up the brown kit, you will get the enjoy the, or you will want to use the enjoy the journey design for the brown colorways. And then here it is in those pretty blue colorways. This design is designed exclusively for the New Year's Eve event from Urban Threads and Embroidery Library. So you won't find this design anywhere else. And I should say the entire collection is really curated for this event. All of the color charts were changed to fit the bag colors and the thread colors in the kits and the stitch density um, and uh, stitch types um, and colors were all matched to Sulky Poly Deco thread as well as all changed to fit the faux leather fabrics. And I will be talking about that more um, during the event as well. All right. 
So I guess that's enough about New Year's Eve. I'm just so, so excited to see you all Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. It's been a long, long time coming. We pretty much start planning New Year's Eve um, the first week of January. So right when we finish um, this live event, we will start planning next year's. So a lot of time and energy and hard work goes into these events, and it, it's almost the day to share it with all of you. So I'm just really excited. We did our rehearsal with Sally Tomato. We're ready to go. I have my threads at the ready, my needles. Um, all of my uh, faux leather pieces are cut. Um, I will be sewing along with you as well as we move along with all the designs and all of that great stuff. So um, I just can't wait. All right. So another thing that you can make in advance of New Year's Eve is this adorable New Year's Eve inspired hand towel. And I love, especially if I'm doing last minute decor, like right now to me, this would be last minute prep for New Year's Eve. Um, but just to have a little something, you know, to go along with your champagne toast or maybe something to put in your bathroom, um, a little hand towel if you're having people over or if it's just you and maybe a partner or loved one, it's a cute idea to just make things a little bit festive. And you can head on over to sulky.com. We have a lot of embroidery blanks. We have towels like this. I was just informed this morning that this um, hemstitch towel with the black border sold out right after I posted this project on the blog. But we do have other colors of this towel. There's a pink, there's a lime green. Um, I believe there's a gold or like a yellowish one that would look great for New Year's. Um, and lots of different color options. But I apologize that uh, this black one is no longer available at sulky.com because I published a blog post a couple days ago and everyone gobbled it up. But we also have some other towel blank options as well. I linked to the pink hemstitch towel in the description of today's post. So you can check that one out. And then there will be some recommendations for you if you want to go shopping for some other towel blanks at sulky.com. These designs or this particular one that I'm showcasing here is a designs by Juju design. Um, it was actually, the artwork is from Itch to Stitch and all those Itch to Stitch designs are now available at designsbyjuju.com. And I linked directly to the design in the description of today's post. And it's also available through the blog post if you wanna get the entire tutorial for what I'm showing you today, but maybe you'd rather read it on the blog and get the full um, you know, supply list and everything that I did, because I tend to paraphrase here on the So What, you can head on over to the Sulky blog at blog.sulky.com or link directly to the post within the description of today's live stream. You'll find it there. At any rate, this is a Designs by Juju uh, or a design available at designsbyjuju.com. And I thought it would also look really cute on a pillow, even a little like shelf sitter pillow size. And maybe you could put that in your bathroom if you have a little decorative shelf or just make a larger pillow and have it on your couch for New Year's Eve. Super cute. I'm going to show you some close ups of it because... As usual, I made this design my own by swapping out all of the threads. So I decided to go with Sulky Poly Sparkle threads for most of the design elements. And I did some test stitch outs to make sure that I could substitute this thread for the thread that was called for by the digitizer. It's really important if you're swapping thread weights to always do even just a little bit of a test stitch out. So for example, on the C of the cheers part of the design, I just tested the C using Poly Sparkle because Poly Sparkle is a 30 weight thread and the design is digitized for a 40 weight thread. So I am trying to use a thicker thread 
um, and put it in the same area as a thinner thread. Sometimes that will work and sometimes it will fail based on the type of stitches that are in the design. So this is a very wide satin stitch, um, uh, stitch pattern in the design. It's not a step fill where there's a lot of overlap of stitches. It's a simple wide satin stitch. So I thought, I bet you I could substitute the poly sparkle for those areas of the design and my thread won't break, it won't overlap. I bet you it'll work perfectly. So I did do a couple of test stitch outs. I did the C in poly sparkle. I did the H in hollow shimmer. I did the E in sliver and so on to see which metallic thread would be suitable for that portion of the design. So I decided to go with poly sparkle for all the lettering. I also used poly sparkle for the little champagne that's inside of the glasses and the little bubbles. And then I used sulky hollow shimmer for the um, silver little plus signs. And I used sliver for the darker, actually switch that. I used hollow shimmer for the darker gray and sliver for the little bit lighter gray plus signs. And I also test stitched those because hollow shimmer and sliver are flat metallic threads. So when you use a flat thread in an embroidery design, you want to make sure you're using it in an area that again, doesn't have a lot of step fill um, stitches that are overlapping or that are too tight together. Um, those plus signs are kind of like smaller satin stitches. So they ended up working great. I didn't have, you know, the flat thread is kind of like a ribbon. So if you go over it too much, it's going to kind of twist, get crinkly along the edges. It might have a rough um, appearance to it because of that. But if you can manage to keep the thread nice and flat while it's coming off of the spool, and I'll give you some tips for that momentarily, then it can work for portions of embroidery designs. So I thought that this just came out so cool, but I wanted to show you these threads right here on the screen because what is so convenient is we have a couple of thread assortments of the Poly Sparkle. This is the gold assortment. So it has all those great gold colors. You can mix and match and swap different gold shades throughout your New Year's Eve or holiday or what have you embroidery designs. We have a gold, we have a silver assortment. We also have a Valentine assortment that has pinks and reds and purples and it's really beautiful. So if you're planning on some Valentine's things coming up, you could grab up a Valentine uh, poly sparkle assortment and have all those great colors and kind of mix and match and swap a little bit of sparkle here and there within embroidery designs or even use them in quilting. Um, they look so, so neat in quilt designs. Um, poly Sparkle, like I said, is a 30 weight thread that is polyester with flecks of metallic running through it. So unlike the hollow shimmer and sliver and original metallic threads, this one just has little portions of metallic in it rather than being made solely out of metallic. So if you've had trouble with metallic threads in the past, or you think my machine doesn't like those, or I just, I don't want to deal with them, even though they're super cool and you should try again, <laughs> you might want to start off with the Poly Sparkle. It gives it a more subtle sparkle as well. So when you're looking at this towel straight on, you can't really tell that it's nice and shimmery and shiny until you get up close and then you get that really neat, subtle, metallic uh, look to it. All right, so here it is up close. You can really see a lot better than me um, just trying to dangle it in front of my camera here, but so neat. I mean, I can't think of a better time to break out the metallic threads than New Year's Eve, right? That's when we wanna wear our secret sequins and, um, you know, little sparkly headbands and things like that. All right, so first thing to do is to prep our towel blank. If you already have a blank hand towel, um, this is a linen blend towel. 
uh, so it's nice and flat. This tutorial is not for a terry cloth type, type of towel because you need a totally different setup and different stabilizers if you're going to be embroidering on a terry cloth. We have lots of tutorials on terry cloth embroidery and terry cloth towels at uh, sulky.com as well as the sulky blog. Um, so if you want to use a terry cloth towel, I highly suggest check out our YouTube channel and search for terry cloth towel or towel embroidery and you'll get a lot of great tutorials on that. This particular tutorial today is assuming that you have a linen, linen blend, towel, or even a flower sack towel would work. You could also embroider this on some quilting cotton, back it with another fabric, and use that as your hand towel for the night, right? No big deal. All right, so first things first, I always pre-wash and dry blanks that I am embroidering. Um, a lot of the times I don't really know what it's made of or it'll say it's um, a blend of two different fabrics. Maybe it's linen and cotton or cotton and rayon or whatever, what have you. Um, and I just don't know what's going to shrink and what's not. So if it's something you're unfamiliar with, definitely just throw it in the washing machine, dry it, give it a good press, and it'll be ready for embroidery. You don't want to do all this beautiful embroidery and then throw it in the washing machine Something like a towel is going to get washed quite frequently and then have it all shrink up around the design and all of a sudden your pucker-free embroidery now has puckers in it because those fibers have shrunk a little bit. All right. And yes, Dawn says make sure you have a clean iron. Very good point. <laughs> all right. So give it a nice good press and then we're going to decide where we want to place our embroidery. So I like to have a removable fabric marker. This is one of those friction highlighter pens. Always test and make sure that the fabric marker that you use is going to be removed in the way that it's intended. All right, so um, especially if you use, let's say, some of those air or water soluble marking pens, if you hit it with an iron before you've removed it, it's permanent. So you want to be familiar with the type of fabric marker that you're using. And I use this one all the time. I tested on the side of the towel a little bit before I used it, made sure it was going to be removable. And I measured the size of my embroidery design. Some embroidery designs come with templates as well that you can either print out or they will come with the dimensions and a little template square to put on your hoop. All types of things at your disposal, depending on the brand of uh, machine that you're using and all that good stuff. So we're going to measure our embroidery design so we know how large it is and where we want to put it on the towel. And then I just mark my center cross marks um, to denote the center of my embroidery design right on the right side of the towel. So use your trusty six inch by one inch ruler. This is my favorite ruler and I have four of them because I'm always trying to figure out where it is. So instead of stressing myself out, I have extras and I have one right next to my sewing machine, one at my cutting table, one at my pressing area, and one that kind of floats around that I have in my travel sewing bag. That's the one I use, I lose most often. But at any rate, this is my favorite ruler and we now have them at sulky.com. Um, so I use that to just you know, measure and mark the center of my embroidery design where I want it on the towel. Also, if you do have a border on your towel, make sure to take that into account. You don't want your embroidery going into that border area, right? So just be sure that you got your placement pretty perfect um, before we get it in the hoop. All right, so I am also, before I start my embroidery, after I load it onto the machine, before I tell my machine to start, I'm going to add a based around the design function um, so that before my embroidery is sewn, I can baste that design perimeter right onto my stabilizer or depending on what my fabric is made out of, of the towel, I can baste it right on the towel itself as well. That just gives me another design placement um, checkpoint 
to make sure that my design is going to stitch out properly, facing up, and nice and straight. When we're working with embroidery blanks, rather than, you know, making something from scratch, it's even more crucial that we get that placement absolutely perfect uh, because there's no going back, right? If we were to make this towel from scratch, let's say we're gonna use some quilting cotton, cut two rectangles, embroider on one, um, basically sew them together like a pillowcase, and then just hang that as a towel for the evening or a, a decorative accent in our kitchen, then we would be able to fudge those rectangles a little bit if our embroidery was slightly off and not centered um, as much as we wished that it would be, right? So we have a lot more leeway when we're making something totally from scratch to make sure that our embroidery looks perfect. But when we're embroidering on blanks, we have no leeway. It's got to be perfect right out of the gate. So marking our placement, basting around the design. Maybe you have a placement sticker that you like to use. Um, maybe you have a camera on your machine that allows you to see exactly um, where your embroidery is going to go. Some machines have like a little projector that will actually project the design onto the fabric and then you can move it ever so slightly or rotate it if you need to make sure it's going to be straight. I mean, the technology on these machines has really come a long way, even just in the past like five or 10 years. Um, so use all the placement um, uh, pointers or placement techniques that you can to make sure that your embroidery is going to sew out properly. I want to show you, speaking of placement stickers, I have mine all in stations ready to go on Saturday. But also, as part of our New Year's Eve event that I was talking about earlier, um, Sulky is giving everybody this PDF, which is a Sulky placement sticker um, uh, PDF, right? So what I have done, and I'll be using this on New Year's Eve as well, what I have done was grabbed this, which is available on the event page for New Year's Eve as a free download, downloaded it, and I printed it onto a sheet of Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. Sticky Fabrisolvi is a water-soluble stabilizer sheet that has a sticky backing to it. So one side is your paper backing, one side is your sticky stabilizer. I printed my placement stickers onto it, and now I have a placement sticker that I can put right onto my fabric to denote that center line. So I don't have to use a fabric marker or if I'm using a fabric like faux leather, I can place my sticker right on the top, get it positioned in the hoop, and then remove that placement sticker and start my embroidery. You'll see it has an arrow going up and down to denote the top of the embroidery. So if I put this in and I hoop it, and my design is oriented the opposite way on my screen, that gives me a visual clue that, oh my gosh, this is gonna embroider upside down. Nothing is worse than grabbing up a kit, stitching out your butterfly, and thinking, oh, it's so beautiful as it's going, and then you get it out of the hoop and it's upside down once it's on your flap. We want to avoid that at all costs, and we want to avoid that on our towel as well, we do not want to have our cheers embroidery upside down, right? All right, so these stickers are super invaluable. If you want to use them for New Year's Eve, be sure to grab up a pack of sticky Fabra Salvi sheets. Um, or if you have sulky stick and stitch, if you like to do hand embroidery or you have grabbed some stick and stitch in the past, this is the same product as sticky Fabra Salvi. So you can also print that placement sticker PDF right on to your stick and stitch sheets as well. All right. Also, they are reusable. So I have several of them basically either stuck to the side of my machine so that I can grab one and use it. Um, but you can probably get three to five uses out of that sticker depending on what fabric you're using it for. Um, so it's really handy. And 
the best part is if you use your placement sticker and you just press start and start going and it starts stitching over your sticker, no worries because it's water soluble. So just continue your design. When it's all done, you can take a cotton swab or just a, a kitchen faucet hose or something like that. Rinse all the stabilizer away. No harm, no foul. You don't have to go trying to pick out your sticker from all of those stitches. So that's why I like to use a water soluble stabilizer sheet for my placement sticker. All right. Heather says, will you be teaching us how to use the stickers? I'm not sure how they work. Yes, I will. So um, I'm super glad you will join for New Year's Eve because I'm going to give you all the tutorial on how to use those stickers. Um, and that's what I'm going to use 100% uh, during the event. So um, at any rate, Esther says, if you don't have a fancy machine for basting, what can you do? Well, you don't have to use this based around the design function. This is just additional security for perfect placement. So you can mark your design like I did previously, um, either using your uh, fabric marker, removable fabric marker, or a placement sticker. Um, you can also fold your fabric in half lengthwise and widthwise um, to denote the center of your design and then align those fold lines with the inner hoop markings on your embroidery hoop. And that's how you can also um, get your design placed where you want it. So this based around the design function is really just extra security. Um, and you can baste right on your stabilizer in the hoop um, and then place your towel um, over the top. Or you can sandwich your towel with your stabilizer and baste everything around in the hoop. And that just shows you, do I have my design perfectly straight um, or is it a little bit askew? If it is, take out those basting stitches, re-hoop and try again. All right. So I am showing you this image. I used a magnetic hoop for this embroidery, but you could certainly use a regular old hoop that came with your machine um, or that maybe you've added on to your embroidery hoop collection. Uh, but these pictures are showing a magnetic hoop, just so you're aware. So the stabilizer that I chose to use for this towel, this is the stabilizer I like to use for all woven hand towels. I like to use Fabrisolvi. Fabrisolvi is the non-sticky version of water-soluble fabric-like stabilizer. Um, the reason I like to use a water-soluble stabilizer when I'm doing uh, woven towels like this, except for terry cloth, um, is because it's gonna wash away completely after the embroidery is complete. And the Fabrisolvi is a nice, like lightweight stabilizer that really matched the weight of this particular linen towel. So I used Fabrisolvi right with the towel and hooped it up in the magnetic hoop. If you're using your regular uh, spring action hoop, you will just hoop those two together, centering your design. All right. Oh, I should mention once it's in there, check your center needle position as well, um, or the center of the design needle function. So, um, advance your uh, machine to the first stitch of the design if it's not there already after the basting and then use your hand wheel to lower the needle and make sure it's right in the center of where you marked or right in the center of that little sticker whatever you're using for your placement that's just another safeguard you can do uh, when you're doing machine embroidery to make sure that you have that center cross mark in the right place. And if not, you can make little adjustments here and there depending on your machine brand. Some machines will, um, you'll have to totally rehoop it. Other machines, you will be able to move your needle um, or and or the hoop to match um, your markings. So just really take your time with this because after all, we didn't have to make the towel, um, right? So let's take that time and make sure it's in the right spot. All right, 
So here is that poly sparkle thread. So the first color in this design, I chose this really cool gold thread with the gold metallic flex running through it. And some people have asked, what do we need to do to sew this thread? Um, I also wanted to mention that some of these things um, I do just as a precaution. So with Poly Sparkle, you don't necessarily have to slow your machine speed like you would if you're using hollow shimmer or sliver or original metallic threads. Since those threads are made of all metallic fibers, right? They don't have that, po the majority of their um, uh, content isn't polyester like the poly sparkle. You really need to slow down the machine speed so there is less friction happening during your high speed sewing, embroidery, or quilting. Especially at higher speeds, that metallic thread can produce this friction um, while it's passing through the needle and some heat can actually build up, causing it to break or snap. The other thing that causes it to break or snap are all the twists and turns of the thread as it's rolling off the spool on its way to the needle. And I will show you how to prevent that as well. So if you, here's just a regular old polyester thread, or this one's a rayon. So when it's coming off the spool and facing your thread, look at all those twists that are happening right? It's even happening with a rayon thread. Over time with metallics, all those twists and turns on their way to the needle, first off, it's going to make your design look weird, especially if it's a flat thread, because now the flat thread is going to have these twists and turns in it, and it's not going to look like a pretty hollow shimmer thread. It's going to look like a crinkly metallic thread that's rough um, to the touch and doesn't look as pretty as it should. We want our thread, instead of like this facing the needle, or even like this going to the needle off of our machine, we want it to go off of the needle like this. So there are no twists and turns, and it's coming off of the spool nice and flat. So that's gonna reduce all of those twists and turns that result in thread breakage. With Poly Sparkle, I find that the twists and turns don't build up. It sews just like a Poly Deco thread for me, even with those additional flex of metallic running through it. You do need a larger needle for either the Poly Sparkle or the Hollow Shimmer, Sliver, or Metallic threads. You need a 9014 needle for all of these threads. For the Poly Sparkle, you need a 9014 because the thread is 30 weight. It's a little bit thicker of a thread than a 40 weight uh, rayon or Poly Deco. For the other metallics, you need a 9014 needle so that the needle eye is larger to accommodate all of that friction that's happening and kind of the bouncing up and down of that thread. You actually need that to happen so if it does twist a little bit or turn or um, uh, build up that sort of heat, there's room for it to go, okay? It's not constricted by a smaller needle eye. So that's why we need a 9014 needle for these specialty threads. We're also gonna slow our machine speed down and don't be afraid to go as slow as you can. I'd rather have you go super slow for the design and have it stitch out beautifully than have you go halfway and have problems with the design because the friction buildup is too great with the speed. So even with Poly Sparkle, I will uh, lower my machine speed by about half. With Original, Sliver, or Hollow Shimmer, I will go as slow as I can. So here is the difference between the Poly Sparkle and the Hollow Shimmer threads. Do you see the difference? Hollow Shimmer has almost like a rainbow effect to it. Super cool. And that's the flat ribbon-like thread. The Poly Sparkle is a much more subtle sparkle. Um, and that is that 30 weight polyester thread. So you can see the difference. If you want something really glitzy and glam, 
uh, go with that hollow shimmer. But I would still suggest not doing um, a satin or fill portion of the design out of the hollow shimmer unless you do a test, go really slow. Um, but in my experience, it's it the design needs to be digitized for that type of thread in order for it to really look great. Now with the cheers, since these are just back and forth wide satin stitches, the hollow shimmer may have worked. Um, I'm trying to, I couldn't find the sample that I did, of course, when I'm here to teach it to you, of the H that I did in the hollow shimmer. I had portions of it that looked great and portions of it where that ribbon-like um, quality of the thread was kind of lost. Um, and I think it was in this little crux of, you know, where the H loop kind of meets itself. Um, so I didn't really enjoy the look of that as much as I liked the poly sparkle. But you might want to do a test depending on your design and see if it works out great for you. Um, it did, however, work great for the little plus signs. And it just gives a different look to those portions of the design. So if you have little dots or little um, straight stitch areas of a design, try that hollow shimmer and see the really neat effects that you can get from it. Um, and again, you could use it for top stitching. If you're making your towel from scratch, you could add a little border and do some top stitching or even some zigzag stitching um, along, you know, a fabric print border. And that would give you that rainbow um, holographic effect that the hollow shimmer gives you as well. All right, some pointers for how to position your spool on your spool pin when you are working with these fantastic sparkly threads. Um, let's see. So this is the Thread Director 1. We have these at sulky.com. Now, you don't necessarily need to use this for poly sparkle, um, but it can't hurt. You, can, you really want to use it for original metallics, hollow shimmer, and sliver. What, is, what it's going to do is the, the part that goes down fits on either your horizontal, or excuse me, your vertical spool pin or your bobbin winder. It fits on there and clamps tightly to either the spool pin or bobbin winder. And then you position it so that the long part is holding the spool. I'll show you a picture of this momentarily. And then your spool is going to go this way towards your threading mechanism toward the needle. Okay. So that's the thread director one. Here it, it is what it looks like in action. You see how now our spool is facing our threading mechanism. The spool pin below it is how your thread's going to come off like this, winding and creating all these loops and twists and turns on its way to the needle. Okay. So that's what it looks like on your machine. They, they are compatible with all machine brands um, and all the instructions are inside. There's also a customer service uh, um, area. So if you have questions on how to use it for your particular brand, you can reach out there as well. It's pretty intuitive once you get it on there. Now this is the Thread Director 2. The difference is this one will hold two spools of thread. You see how each side comes out like this? You can put two spools of thread on here, do twin needle work. You can have one spool waiting for your next thread color and simply thread the other one and then get this one ready for your next thread color and so on. Um, so if you're looking to maybe have all the capabilities, should you wanna take it a step further, maybe go for the Thread Director 2, it's a few dollars more, and then you'll have that option of having you know different threads at the ready as you're working your way through a design or some twin needle work. And here is that one with one spool on it. You could see goes on one side and then you would put obviously your other spool on the other or have the next color that's in your design kind of ready and waiting for you. So these are really cool. They are totally game changing if you like to work with these super fun uh, metallic threads. 
All right, so here we have the design in the hoop. It's all stitched out. We have our poly sparkle in the lettering and inside of the little champagne glasses. Then I have poly deco as the outline of the glass and the little sort of kind of snowflakey looking things. And then we've got our hollow shimmer as our little plus signs um, and then some sliver as those other plus signs. So lots of different metallics going on and it looks so cool. So after your embroidery is complete, we are going to remove it from the hoop and trim away the Fabrisolvi, um, you know, kind of close to the design edge. So I like to just trim that away, making sure that all of my jump threads on the front side and back side are nice and trimmed. When you're doing a blank or a towel where everyone's going to see the wrong side, you want to make sure that those jump threads are nice and tidy on the back side. Okay. All right, so here I have my Fabrisolvi all nice and trimmed up. And actually, I think I used two layers of Fabrisolvi behind this just to make sure that that um, open weave linen fabric would accept all of that great thread work. Um, so I believe in the blog post, you will see that I use two layers of Fabrisolvi. So now it's time to remove our stabilizer. You can simply throw it in the washing machine on a rinse and spin cycle, or you can rinse it under running water um, on the warm side, but not doesn't need to be super hot. Um, it'll even wash away under cold water as well. It'll just take a little bit longer. So I would say lukewarm or warm water, rinse it all away, and then you want to let your towel dry flat on a towel, um, like a terry cloth absorbent towel and then give it a good press uh, from the wrong side. Now with these metallic threads, I never ever touch my hot iron to any of my threads, whether it's rayon, polyester, metallic, cotton. I just keep my iron away from it. Um, if your iron is accidentally too hot and you go over the top of even a rayon thread, it could melt the fibers a little bit um, and, you know, I always have my iron too hot, quite honestly. So I just steer clear of my embroidery and I press around it um, or press from the wrong side using a press cloth if you must press over uh, your stitching area. Um, and here I am pressing from the right side just to remove any hoop markings. And then you have your beautiful finished towel. That Fabrisolvi really supports all of those stitches during the process, and then it totally washes away. No worries about tearing anything away. You definitely don't want to cut away stabilizer because that will stay with the project, and we're going to see the wrong side of it, and that would be weird. So we want to either wash away all of our stabilizer, tear away all of our stabilizer, but washing it away in this case is really the way to go because of you know those little bubbles and the little portions of the design would be really hard to get rid of a tearaway stabilizer inside all of those little bits and areas. So a wash away is really the way to go. And here it is up close again. So you can see all the different threads that I used. That poly sparkle thread for the champagne, I love it. It makes it look effervescent and bubbly. And then of course the poly sparkle for all the lettering and then the specialty metallic threads for the little bits and bobbles and plus signs. Um, and then the standard poly deco for the outline of the glasses. So love it. Somebody did say, where is the design? I linked directly to the design in the description of today's post. It's way at the bottom before you get to uh, registering for New Year's Eve sew along event. Uh, so you will see it's a design that's available at designsbyjuju.com. It's an itch to stitch design. Um, there are some other designs in this collection as well that are super cute for a New Year's Eve. And the reason I chose this one is first of all, I fell in love with it. And secondly, I thought it was really going to work with these specialty threads. So when, again, you are substituting a thread type or weight for what was originally intended by the digitizer, you need to run some tests you need to do a test stitch of at least a portion of the design 
probably the portion of the design that is the most dense or largest area to make sure it's going to look good on your towel uh, because the digitizer did not intend to use a heavier weight thread. So you could have overlap of uh, stitches, um, which would look kind of muddy and, and not as beautiful. You could have some uh, thread breakage because you're trying to fit a heavier thread in a smaller space that was meant for a lighter weight thread. So you see where I'm going here? You've got to make sure that if it's not digitized for these specialty threads, that you do a test stitch out. And since I've already tested this one for you, it's a great one to use. You won't have to go through all of that trouble. Uh, you can just go on and start stitching it with the poly sparkle. All right. And here's just another design. Got the champagne at the ready in the bucket. Um, and it looks really great to have out for New Year's Eve. Couple of champagne glasses. Um, maybe you like some chocolate or some sparkling cider instead. However you do your New Year's, I think this is a really cute design. And something quick that you can get done in, you know, an hour's time um, and put it out for a little celebration to ring in the new year. So I hope you all enjoy that quick and easy project. Again, that would look really great on a little pillow, little pillow shelf sitter um, project. These little shelf sitter pillows are all the rage. And hey, add some metallic ribbon work or something to it. Um, trim up the towel with a fun gold rickrack edge um, or a gold braid or something around uh, the towel, uh, you know, um, border. If you add a border to it or along the pillow perimeter. Um, so all different ways that you can add a little bit of glitz and shimmer and shine to a quick project that is done in time for New Year's Eve. All right, Kathy says, love the close-up of all that sparkle in the towel. I mean, pictures just don't do it justice. It looks so neat in person. Um, I mean, it's even hard for me to even see right here, but it's it just looks so, so pretty. I love the subtle sparkle of it. Um, it's not super in your face, and it has a nice feel to it, that poly sparkle. You know, it's a, it, it feels like polyester thread. It's a got a tiny bit of roughness just from that little bits of metallic thread. Um, but for a hand towel, something that maybe your guests are going to use. Although I, I would think most guests would leave it alone and know that it's decor, but you know, it is a towel, so it's got to be functional as well. <laughs> All right. Oh, Esther says the cheers design is also on sale. Great. Thank you, Esther. Okay. Doris says clear vinyl on the upper portion of the champagne glasses would be fun. What a great idea, Doris. I love that. That would be so cute. So after you do the fill inside the glass, add a little bit of vinyl before you do the satin stitching of the glass, cut it away like an applique, and you have a little bit of, it's, it would really look like a glass. What a great idea. Yvonne says, I can't believe how quickly Sally Tomato shipped my kit for Saturday's sew along. Well, that is great to know. So if you are still wanting a kit and you really want it to come before Saturday, just reach out to them. Maybe they can make it happen. Maybe it's a Christmas miracle. Maybe it's a New Year's miracle. I'm not sure. So uh, reach out to them and see. All right. Sue says, love the towel and the sparkles. It makes a celebration by itself. All right. Well, I hope that you all make one. Um, or make something with either that design, or maybe you have a design already in your embroidery design uh, folder on your computer, and you can experiment with some of those great poly sparkle threads and see what works and what doesn't. And I would love to see the results on our Sulky Facebook group. Um, that is called Sulky Stitch and Post. And if you are not already a member of our Stitch and Post Facebook group, be sure to head on over to Facebook and ask to join. You simply just need to search for Sulky Stitch and Post and ask to join. We will let you in and you can post pictures of your projects and project progress and you can ask us questions there directly. Lots of you are already a part of it because I recognize your name. I'm in there all the time. 
Um, I add pictures of my uh, stuff that I'm doing on the side when I have the time as well. So it's a great, great resource and a fun time over there at Sulky Stitch and Post. So again, four days are left to register if you want to join us live on New Year's Eve. Even if you can't join live, you can still watch the entire event from start to finish. You can rewind, pause, fast forward, go to your favorite part and review. Um, this is particularly great if you make this during the event and then a couple months from now, you want to make this as a gift for somebody. You can simply go back to your event page, watch whatever parts that you need a little bit of refresher on, and make another Smith organizer to gift away for someone. This would make a really great graduation gift. Um, anybody who likes to travel or simply get their technology or sewing supplies or office supplies organized, um, it's a really, really great project for ringing in the new year if one of your resolutions is to stay organized. I think that we all need help with that all the time. So really fun project. Did I mention I'm excited to share it with you? <laughs> um, so only four more days. Make sure you're all registered. I can't wait to see you there with Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato. And again, if you have any questions leading up to the event, after you register, you grab your pattern, you get your designs, you figure out which one you're going to use the day of the event. Any questions, please send them our way at info at sulky.com or info at sallytomato.com. We want to make sure that your questions regarding technical things or pattern things, um, uh, you know, we will be answering questions during the event. Uh, it's just a, you know, it's a intense sew along with a lot, a lot of cameras. I will have a three camera setup um, and Sally Tomato will have two cameras going on. So we have five cameras to switch back and forth the day of the event, answer all of your questions as they come in and do the demos. So there's just a lot, a lot to do the day of. If you do have questions that can be answered before you join us live, be sure to send us those in advance so we can make sure that you have the best experience possible. All right. Uh, Jana says, I will definitely have to try the sparkle thread on my next project. Fantastic. All right. Esther's got her kit. She's getting her bobbins pre-wound. Fantastic. Looking forward to New Year's Eve. So along. See you soon. All right. <coughs> that was my party noise um, sound effect. Ready? <coughs> I had to play it again. All right. I'm so excited to see all of you again in four days. So pop the champagne, wind the bobbins, grab a snack, and I will see you on Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure to take that uh, time into account. So if you are Pacific time, mountain time, if you are watching internationally, be sure to note that we are 12 p.m. Eastern time time and take that into account. Set your alarm so you can join us right when we go live on New Year's Eve. So everybody go uh, have a great rest of your day making your New Year's Eve towel or pillow or what have you. And I will see you in, um, I don't know, maybe some sparkles on New Year's Eve. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you on New Year's Eve and I'll see you next Tuesday for another So What.